Welcome to the Curious Culture Club. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of the Mandela Effect. This intriguing phenomenon occurs when a group of people collectively misremember a fact or event. It's not our first rodeo with this topic. So if you're after a more thorough understanding, we suggest checking out our previous video. But for now, buckle up and prepare to question your reality as we delve into some mind-bending examples of the Mandela Effect. First up, a classic misquote from Snow White. Now many of us remember the wicked queen uttering the iconic phrase, mirror, mirror on the wall. But here's where reality gives us a twist. The actual line from the 1937 Disney classic is, magic mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? What wouldst thou know, my queen? Magic mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? Yes, you heard that right. Magic mirror, not mirror mirror. This common misquote has even infiltrated other aspects of pop culture, with books, movies and TV shows repeating the incorrect version. Mirror, mirror on the wall, is this not the most perfect kingdom of them all? It's a prime example of the Mandela effect in action, where a large group of people collectively remember something incorrectly. This phenomenon, named after the false memory of Nelson Mandela's death in prison, continues to baffle and intrigue us. So, next time you think of Snow White, remember it's magic mirror on the wall. Isn't it mind-boggling how our memories can play tricks on us? Here's another famous misquote, this time from Forrest Gump. We all remember Tom Hanks sitting on that park bench, uttering the iconic line, Life is like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. But hold on to your hats, because that's not the actual line from the movie. In reality, Hanks' character, Forrest Gump, says, My mama always said, Life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. My mom always said, life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Yes, that's right. He used the past tense, was, not is. It's a subtle difference, but it's an important one that changes the meaning of the quote. The actual line implies that Forrest's mum has passed away and he is reflecting on her wisdom whereas the misquote makes it seem like she's still around giving advice. It's fascinating how a single word can change our perception of a quote, isn't it? Now let's talk about the colour chartreuse. This is an example that truly showcases the power of the Mandela effect. Many of us have a distinct memory of chartreuse being a reddish pink colour, reminiscent of cherries or roses. But hold on to your hats, because chartreuse is actually a shade of green. Yes, you heard it correctly. Named after a French liqueur, chartreuse is a vibrant blend of yellow and green, much like fresh spring foliage or a zesty lime. It's a far cry from the rosy hue many of us remember. So how did we get it so wrong? Some theories suggest a mix-up with another colour name, while others point to the fallibility of human memory. Regardless, it's a fascinating example of how our minds can play tricks on us, constructing vivid yet entirely inaccurate memories. It's amazing how our minds can create such vivid yet inaccurate memories. Next up, a popular fast food chain's name that many people remember incorrectly. Have you ever found yourself craving some crispy chicken sandwiches or waffle fries from Chic Filet? Well, you might be surprised to discover that the restaurant you're thinking of doesn't exist. That's right, the name of this beloved eatery is actually spelled Chick fil A. It's a common mistake, with countless people insisting they remember the restaurant being spelled without the K. But if you look at any sign, any menu, or even their website, you'll see it's always been Chick-fil-A. It's a subtle difference, but one that many of us seem to get wrong. This Mandela Effect example is a testament to how even the most mundane details can become a part of this fascinating phenomenon. So the next time you're in the mood for some chicken, remember it's Chick-fil-A, not Chick-fil-A. It's a subtle difference, but one that many of us seem to get wrong. Let's take a look at a famous statue, The Thinker. This iconic piece, sculpted by Auguste Rodin, is often remembered differently by many. Do you recall how the thinker is positioned? You might be picturing him with his hand resting on his forehead, deep in thought. That image seems to resonate with us, doesn't it? It's a pose we ourselves might strike when we're pondering a difficult problem or question. But in reality, the thinker's hand is not on his forehead at all. It's on his chin. Yes, his chin. It's a subtle shift but it dramatically changes the statue's pose. The thinker is leaning on his hand, sure, but not in the way many of us remember. 
It's one of those small details that might seem insignificant, but when you realize the discrepancy, it's enough to make you question your memory. It's a small detail, but one that drastically changes the statue's pose in our memories. Now let's travel to New Zealand, or at least where we think it is. You see, many of us have this mental image of New Zealand sitting pretty northeast of Australia. But pause for a moment and take a look at a world map. You'll find that New Zealand is actually southeast of Australia. Yes, you heard it right, southeast. It's a shocker, isn't it? It's almost as if the islands took a leisurely swim across the Pacific while we weren't looking. But alas, our memories have played tricks on us once again. This is another classic example of the Mandela Effect, where a collective misremembering occurs among a large group of people. Perhaps it's time we all took another geography class or at least spent some time scrutinizing a world map. Because as it turns out, geography isn't always as straightforward as we think, is it? Next up, a common household product with a commonly misremembered name. You know that freshening spray that helps banish odors from your home? Many of us refer to it as Febreze, but hold on to your hats, folks. The actual name of this popular product is Febraz. That's right, it's spelled with just one E in the middle, not two. Now you might be scratching your head thinking, but I clearly remember it being Febreze, you're not alone. This is another classic example of the Mandela effect, where a large group of people share a false memory. It seems our minds have added an extra E to make the word seem more balanced, or perhaps because breeze is a real word that relates to the product's purpose. So the next time you reach for that can of air freshener, remember it's Febreze, not Febreze. It's interesting how adding an extra E can make a name seem more familiar. Now let's talk about a popular TV show that many people misquote. A charming cosmopolitan sitcom that has left an indelible mark on pop culture. We're referring to none other than Sex and the City, or was it Sex in the City? Many of us recall the title as the latter, vividly picturing it emblazoned across our screens, yet the reality is the former. The title is, and has always been, Sex and the City. This subtle switch between and and in seems minor, but it has caused a significant ripple in the collective memory of audiences worldwide. The question is, why do so many of us remember it incorrectly? It's a fascinating example of the Mandela effect, demonstrating how our minds can warp even the most familiar aspects of our reality. So next time you're discussing Carrie, Samantha, Charlotte and Miranda's exploits, remember it's sex and the city. A simple and versus in can drastically change our memories of a title. Next, let's discuss the location of the human heart. Here's an interesting one that might have you checking your own chest. Many of us have grown up believing that our heart is located on the far left side of our chest. It's a common misconception, one that's been perpetuated by countless depictions in art, media, even the age-old hand-on-heart gesture. Yet if you consult medical texts, you'll find that the heart isn't tucked away on the left, but actually sits in the centre of our chest, nestled snugly between our lungs. True, it does lean a little to the left, but it's certainly not as far left as many of us seem to remember. So why the discrepancy? Is it a simple misunderstanding, a collective misremembering, or another instance of the Mandela effect at work? It's a question worth pondering. It's fascinating how our perceptions can differ from reality, isn't it? Finally, let's look at a beloved cartoon series with a commonly misremembered name. We all remember Saturday mornings filled with the antics of Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck and the rest of the gang. But do you remember the title as Looney Tunes? If so, you're not alone. Many recall the cartoon series as Looney Tunes, likely associating the double O's with the cartoon characters we loved. However, the actual title is Looney Tunes. That's right, tunes as in melodies, a nod to the show's musical roots. This is yet another example of the Mandela effect, where a large group of people remember something differently than how it actually is. It's a fascinating glimpse into the quirks of our collective memory, showing us that even the details of our most cherished childhood memories can be subject to change. Isn't it interesting how our minds can alter even the most cherished childhood memories? And there you have it, some incredible examples of the Mandela effect. It's a fascinating reminder that our perceptions and memories, as confident as we might be in them, are not always as reliable as we think. The world is full of mysteries, and the Mandela effect certainly adds to that intrigue. So remember to keep an open mind, question everything, and embrace the unexpected. Have you ever experienced a Mandela effect moment? Share your most mind-bending memory or any other examples you know in the comments below.